So welcome back everybody, and or welcome if, you, if, if you're not welcome back, just welcome or welcome back for, from earlier this week. Hope that some of you have been able to um, check in and see the video and listen to the podcast. Um, and if you haven't done it yet, then Chris will kindly put the links in the chat box um, in a little while as, as we go, so you can pick them off from there. But uh, yeah, welcome and thanks for coming and joining us this afternoon. So this afternoon we've got the lovely Jules Murray, who has very kindly given up her sunny afternoon to come and talk to us about all things resilience. And i um, been planning this with Jules for quite some time. Very excited to, to see what she has for us um, over the next hour. The usual thing, if you have some questions, we've got a Q&A box. So please just put your questions in the Q&A box and Chris and I will get to them and ask them on your behalf um, when we have a little pause um, and sit back and enjoy. So Jules, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, giving up your time for us and uh, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Hilary, and uh, welcome everybody. What a brilliant way to end the week. Yeah, learning. I love learning. Um, what do we need to know about me? Uh, my qualification is in neuro-linguistic programming. So neuro is all about our brain and the way we receive and process information. Linguistics are the words we use and the way we say things. And programming, our behavior. Now, I'm fascinated with the brain. So this big jelly mass that weighs around three pounds and is situated in the, the upper half of our body and indeed is responsible for an awful lot of things, isn't it? It's so responsible for a lot of outcomes and responsibilities. And today, that's where I want to take you. I'm gonna make it really nice and simple for you, but I think as adults, sometimes when we're learning, we need to unpick our beliefs and behaviors and thought patterns around a topic and take ourselves back to a state of conscious incompetence. Because when we're there, then we're open to receiving, open to hearing new tips and new ideas and open to discuss, discussing great topics like this, like personal resilience. I truly believe you are way better at being personally resilient than you really think you are. And my aim for this afternoon, which is a big task just because we've just got an hour or so to do this, is I'm going to try and sort of create some new habits for yourself today, new beliefs around this topic. And that I really believe will help you in, in your well-being and your personal resilience journey. So just before we start, I want you to do something for me, wherever you're sat or indeed if you're standing, I'm actually standing, but I want you to very comfortably just fold your arms. Just fold your arms like you normally would. Just sit back and relax and folding your arms. Okay, I'm gonna assume you're all doing that, which is lovely. And now what I'd like you to do is I want you to open them and fold them the other way. Ugh, I bet you're still struggling. <laughs> How weird does that feel? Sometimes it's just really weird to try new things, isn't it? We're kind of stretched out of our comfort zone. That doesn't feel comfortable at all. I really don't like that. But here we go. All that's happened there is that you're changing a behavior. You're changing a habit. And that's what we're going to look at today is just changing the way we do things and maybe trying on some new techniques and new ideas and see how they fit for size. Now, however old you are, you've probably folded your arms that way for your entire life. And so me introducing a new way of doing it is going to feel odd at first. But believe me, you, you know, when we keep doing it, a repeated action becomes a new habit and repeated new thoughts will become new beliefs for you. So shall we get going and uh, let's get started and see what we're going to be discussing this afternoon. So we're going to look at habits and behaviours, and um, just as we've demonstrated there with the arm folding exercise, um, and what people with personal resilience really have, how they operate, how they think, how they behave. And I'm going to introduce you to six elements of it, six elements that I help, you know, I really hope that at the end of this sort of um, this afternoon will help you boost your personal resilience going back into the workplace, taking flight again after we've been into this freeze and fight mode for so long. 
we're going to have a look at who's in your support network, who's in your herd, who's around you and who can help you. And also, of course, we're going to look after your wellness. We really need to be taking care of ourselves, listening to our body and making sure that we're doing the very best we can to give ourselves a fighting chance of bouncing back. All righty, so if we're okay with that, we're going to get started. Um, there's a couple of interactions I'd like you to do with me, please. And my first question here with my beautiful little girl is to ask you, you know, what is personal resilience? And I'd like you to please to put some words in the chat box now. What do you think a resilient person looks like? What is define resilience? And what type of things do people with resilience have? So I'll give you a few minutes just to have a think about that and to pop all those things into the chat box. What do you think personal resilience is? Great. Well done. Gosh, we've got people waving from Cornwall and sunshine in daffodils in Wales. I love all this. Great. Okay. So keep on going, don't give up. The ability to bounce back well, strength, ability to face and overcome extreme challenges, discipline, positivity, openness, strong, problem solving abilities, says Tara. Ability to operate under pressure, calmness, understanding, picking yourself up, thinking outside the box, having good, these are excellent. Thank you very, very much for playing. Amazing. Confidence, self-awareness, adaptability. Guys, you guys have got this. You know what you've got to do. You really do. These are absolutely brilliant. Brilliant being able to stay calm. Fantastic, thank you very much. You know a lot more than, than you think you do and I promise you, you are way more resilient than you think you are. I'm just gonna prove that to you this afternoon. So resilient people, they take a problem solving approach to difficulty. That's what you're saying in, in the chat box as well. Of course they do. They keep a sense of perspective and I've put in brackets and humor because we need to keep humor in, in our lives. And, and to changes. I mean, goodness knows who on earth would have prescribed that we would be going through the changes that we've been through this last, this last 12 months. Absolutely no one would have written that, wouldn't they? And if you'd have told me 12 months ago that this was gonna happen, I'd say, are you serious? No way. And what we do when we come across change is we tend to go into a fight or flight or freeze mode. There are responses to things where we don't know what we're doing and we'd like to sort of sit low for a little while. And what I see now is things are starting to take flight again and you're gonna take flight again. And we're gonna tend and befriend this pandemic and we really are gonna own it. So resilient people draw on a range of strategies to cope with pressure. Of course they do, they're very self-aware. I saw that in the, in the chat box as well. So well done you. They ask for help when they need it. Please, you can be vulnerable. It's perfectly okay to need help. It's perfectly okay to ask. People love it. It's a very, very attractive quality. They persevere when the going gets tough. Of course they do. They're really resilient and determined people, aren't they? And they recognize and respect their own limits, including what they can and what they can't control. And I think that's very important. We need to let go of these things that we can't control and focus on the things that we can. And the things that we can, we can do differently. And I'm going to introduce a whole range of you know, really great ideas with you today. Please don't try and take them all on. Just prioritize what ones really resonate with you. What ones do you like? What ones would you like to try on for size and see how they fit? Give it a go. You might want to give it up a little bit later and try another one. You might want to try them all, but just do them gradually and introduce them into your life just one step at a time. So we've got the resilience, the art of bouncing back. 
And there's my little girl there on a space hopper. If you're old enough to remember a space hopper, <laughs> you're bouncing along, boing, 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 loving life as you go. Now, of course, we've all been this resilient, you know, as toddlers, when we started to walk, you know, we'd hang on to a piece of furniture and pull ourselves up and we'd fall down again, but we'd just giggle, turn over, pull yourself up, bash into something, start crying, have another go, have another go. We've all done that because I know that not one of you on the call there is still crawling around on your hands and knees. So we have that ability to keep bouncing back and be determined and to pull through. And I want to take us that self back to that stage and, and just keep, keep that in the, the forefront of our mind for this afternoon. So these six keys to personal resilience that I was sort of asking you, the first one I'm going to introduce to you is all about a sense of purpose. Now, positive mental attitude. Of course, you've got to have that, haven't you? If you've got to have personal resilience, that's definitely got to be a, a key. Relationships, connecting with other people. Tenacity, this is our determination to achieve. Taking control. One of my favorites and one that I'm really going to hopefully get you to enjoy today as well. And looking after yourself. So they're the six that we're going to be going through, and I should take them down step at a time and uh, just give you a little talk about each one as we go. And I hope that's all OK with all of you. So our first one here is indeed a sense of purpose. Do you have a sense of purpose right now? Have you lost your way a little bit? Is that why you're here, just to come and boost your sense of purpose? We do need it, don't we? Otherwise, this could be us just sort of sleepwalking through our day on some sort of treadmill, not really having any energy to do anything, just feeling really lost and lethargic. And, you know, this isn't good for us, is it? We're drifting robotically through our days, you know, feeling really dissatisfied. And I think what we really need to be doing is asking ourselves, you know, what lights the fire in my, in my belly? What is my sense of purpose? What do I love to do in life? You know, what gets me up out of bed in the morning and keeps me going? What's my purpose? We need to be clear about our purpose all the way through our lives so that we can buy into our why and we always understand that we're, we're working towards that beacon of light, our end goal. What is it we're trying to achieve? And make sure that we've got that and we keep it in our focus at all times of, of the day. And that's a really good one to start because I think this is a really nice foundation for all of the other elements that we're going to talk about. So today, you know, sit back and have a think, you know, what is my sense of purpose? Have I ever really asked myself that question before? Maybe today's the day. You're never stuck in the past. Nobody's ever stuck. We can always move on. And indeed, we're always in a point of change. And that's where the powerful moment is, the moment we decide to change right now. Now, here's my bike of ability, and I'm using it as a metaphor here, guys, for us to cycle through our day, not just sleepwalk through, but really, really push ourselves and pedal ourselves through our day. Now, here's my beautiful bike, and it's a carbon bike, this. It costs thousands of pounds, and it's black, and I love it. And I don't really know a lot about bikes, but I think that carbon frame one is apparently quite expensive. So that's the one I'm going to use for this model today. Now, of course, however many thousands of pounds that bike costs, it doesn't matter because it's going nowhere without you on it, going nowhere without you pedaling it, is it? It's just going to sit there propped up against the wall. So who are you being when you are riding this bike? What direction are you taking it? Ask yourself these questions. I want you to think of your front wheel here to represent your social intelligence. This is how you get along with people in life. Now, coming from the hospitality trade, I know that you guys are hugely adaptable. You're chameleons and you have the ability to change your approach, whether you're seeing the little old lady who needs your help carrying her bag, to the little young lad who's dressed up as a pirate, to the Russian businessman who wants to know where the bar is. You have the ability to twist and turn and meld your, your personality and your delivery and your behavior and performance to whoever you have in front of you. And that's what the front wheel of this bike is representing. 
how you twist and turn and maneuver yourself through your day. The back wheel here is where the gears are, isn't it? If you've ever ridden a bike, you know, you can have many, many gears here. And I want you to think of that as your skills and knowledge. Everything you know is always in your head. It's always behind you. And you can pull on this whenever you want to. You know, you can use it. You can crank it up a few gears when you need to. You can drop it down a few notches when you don't need to. But it's always there behind you, your skills and knowledge, everything you've ever learned in life, every qualification that you've ever earned for yourself is there for you to pull on and get yourself through your day. Now, even so, we've got these great things. What about if we've got a three day uphill climb? What about if we've got a 10 month lockdown? You know, what happens to us then? I want you to ride your bike with the DAC factor. What's the DAC factor, Jules? This is your drive and determination, your attitude and your confidence. Because without this DAC factor, as I'm calling it, the first pothole you come across along this road, you're going to topple off. You know, the first boulder that you've got to cycle yourself around, you're not going to manage. And now we've got this three day uphill climb. We've got to really dig deep and push in now. And this is you driving with determination, the right positive attitude to winning and indeed the confidence to get you there. So please, please, you know, ride your bike of ability, get on it every single day. Don't leave it propped up at the wall. Don't fall off, don't wobble at the first pothole that you come across. And if somebody asks you to change direction really, really quickly, you know how. You've got that social interaction with people. That's what you're born to do. You're in hospitality. Your connection is phenomenal. Your skills and knowledge are there behind you. And now we're going to apply that DAC factor to get you through your day and indeed give you a sense of purpose. Two, positive mental attitude. I could talk all afternoon and probably all weekend and into next week about this. <laughs> I am an irritatingly positive person. I find positivity in everything. I'm just, um, you know, I'm always looking for the solution. My glass is always half full. You know, I'm always trying to sort of put a positive spin on everything that I do in life. And uh, and I and I realize, you know, that people say, oh, you know, but that's sometimes not easy to do. Sometimes, you know, the whole world is against you, and to find positive things isn't so easy. But positive thinking is so practical. People think it's fluffy. Oh, there Jules goes again, talking about a positive stuff. It's so fluffy. Yeah, fluffy, call it fluffy. I don't mind. Positive thinking is practical. The more positive people are, the more successful they are. They make better decisions. They're more creative. They're more productive. They're more resilient. And they have better interpersonal skills. Full stop. Absolutely. Argue me with it. I don't mind. There's a massive statistic here. When your brain is in positive, it's 31%. 31%, that's massive. 31% more productive and more creative than when it's negative, neutral, and stressed. Now, I don't even care if that 31% is true. I really don't. I, it just makes so much sense to me. It could be 75% for all I care. I just know that when my brain is in positive, the serotonin is flying, the ideas are flowing, I'm feeling happy, I'm feeling on top of the world, I'm spreading joy, and my energy and creativity and productivity rises. Of course it does. It's exactly the same for you too. We have a choice, don't we? We can choose to be positive or we can allow these negative thoughts into our brains and allow them to destroy you know, and be self-limiting. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking now, oh, God, you know, she's saying this, but, you know, it's really difficult. You know, when you're in a dark place and you're not feeling, you know, positive, you know, it really is hard to change your thoughts. And I agree with you. It is. But it's totally possible. Why not push it? Why not force it? So we've got a picture of a golfer here to represent positivity. Now, this golfer can either talk himself into a really great shot or he can talk himself into a terrible shot. 
he can say, oh my God, here we go, this tea again. Every single time I come to this tea, this is the hole I, I mess up on. I know I'm going to splice it over there. I'm going to shoot it in there. I probably won't even hit it off the tea. I'll probably roll two feet in front of me. He's already creating that for himself. His brain's doing it. He has an option. He has a choice. He can approach that hole and say, not this time. This time I am getting this in. Hole in one on the green, it's going there. I've got my stance. I know what I know. I've had lessons. I know how to hit a golf ball. This hole is not getting me again. I am determined. I'm going to just play it out in my head right now that this ball is getting onto the green and it's winning. I'm going to get there. That's what successful people think. They don't think about failure. They don't think about not making it. They don't think about not having a great day. They just think, I'm going for it. That's how positive people think. And that's how successful people think. So we have a choice. And I want you to make that choice today. You know, this is Friday afternoon. We're 1422 in the afternoon. Make the difference today. If you were sat at home on your settee with your best friend and you're watching the TV and suddenly an intruder comes into your lounge and starts turning the furniture upside down, I believe that you would not allow that to happen. You would stand up and you would go, get out, get out now. Now think of that as your thought process. You let these negative thoughts come into your head and turn your life upside down, make you feel dark, make you feel uncomfortable. Shout, get out. The next time a horrible thought comes in, a self-limiting thought, a damaging thought comes into your head, one that says you'll never do this, you can't do this, you're anxious all the time, you're not looking forward to that, just stand there and say, get out just like you would the intruder, and replace it with a better thought. Replace it with an uplifting thought, an empowering thought, a happy thought, a thought that's going to really make you have an incredible day. It's your choice. It's your brain. And I know it's difficult. And you're saying, Jules, like, yeah, but, you know, I can't do that. You can do it. Force it. Make it happen. The brain will always take the easiest path. We always you know, choose the path of least, least resistance. Make it challenging for yourself. Make it take that difficult path and stretch yourself. Give yourself stretch me, develop me, grow me thoughts, not just settle for what I've got thoughts. So here's my tips on positive mental attitude. Let go of the past. You are not stuck. It's behind you. Let it go. Whatever you have as a repeated thought that's turned into a belief in your head, change it. Let it go. If someone in your past has told you you'll never do that, you'll never achieve that, and suddenly you believe that, take a moment to think. You never stopped yourself and wrote that down. I thought, oh, that's really good. I must remember that. I will never amount to anything. I'll never pass these exams. I'm a girl, therefore I'll never succeed in a man's world. You never stopped yourself and wrote those down, did you? It's just you heard them too many times and you thought them too many times that they turned into a belief. So let's make today the day. Let go of the past. A shift in perspective may be all you need. You're viewing it that way? Shift it. Look at it upside down. Look at it back to front. Look at it through your legs. I don't know. Look at it just in a different way than the way you usually look at it. Change your internal representation. And what I mean by that is all of the things that are firing into your head from all of your five senses at any given moment in time, they come inside and you make pictures and words and feelings about them. But you're doing that. Nobody else is doing that. So if you don't like what they're representing when they get in, kick them out, shout out, and let new stuff in. Let stuff in that makes you happy, makes you feel good, you know, stuff that lifts you and empowers you. 
force yourself into changing the filter. You know, think of yourself as your eyes, as a, a filter, a lens of a camera. You don't like the way it looks? Take it off. Put a different one on. That's better. Look for a positive aspect in every situation. Challenge yourself to do that. Even the darkest, darkest, darkest thing, you know, look for some time, look for a place and see what you can find. Change your physiology. This is your physical state. If you walk with your head down and you slump your shoulders, look up. Go for a walk when this is finished. It's a beautiful sunny day in the south and I'm not sure where you're coming from, but if you've got a lovely day today, even if you haven't got a lovely day, put your, put your raincoat on and your wellies. Go outside and walk. Look up. See the chimney, see the birds, see the sky, see the tops of the trees. Change your physiology. See what it does to you. It really is incredibly empowering. And laugh more. Find things to laugh at. Just whatever makes you giggle, do more of it. Number three, this is connecting with others. This is all about our relationships. Who have you got in your life? Let's have a think about it. Here you are as the gazelle. Look at you, attractive beast there in the Serengeti. And all of those people behind you are in your herd. Who are they? What do they make? What are they made up of? I want you to really think, you know, who is in your herd? What have you got? You know, who's there to to listen to you when uh, when you want to tell, you know, a really good story or you want to recall a memory? Who's there to make you laugh? Who's there to listen to your business ideas? Who's there to listen to you talk through a problem or a challenge? You know, who have you got in your herd? Who's in your support network? Give them a call this afternoon, just check in with them, see that they're okay. And maybe do this for yourself, pop yourself there in the middle and then just choose five, five or six people that you're close to, that you can use as a support. Who can you ask for help? Who could you go out for a walk with at the weekend? I know you only allowed one, <laughs> I'm not breaking any rules, <laughs> but you can, go locally. <laughs> And indeed, you know, who can you call up? Who can you have a Zoom quiz with? Who could you just, you know, have laugh at those memories that you had that time, that place? You know, who haven't you spoken to for a while? Who do you want to check in on? All of these people will help to build your resilience because you'll know that they're there for you and you've got a great support network. Now, when we're in the workplace, I wanted to share this one with you today which is how I tend to look at people around me, people in my team and in other teams. And I look at them through two dimensions, two dimensions of a relationship. The first one is trust. And I ask myself, you know, how much can I rely on that person? Who's got my back in good times and bad? You know, who's there for me? Solid. Who do I know that I can count on 24-7? And the second way I like to look at them is in a state of an agreement. To what extent do the people around me share my vision and my goal? What is it that we're trying to achieve as a business, as an organization, as a team, as a department? Who's there with me? You know, if I'm the manager, I'm the leader, who's in my team and who's sharing that vision? Now, I'm not sure what your situation is, of course, and I, I, I don't have the time to, to find out at this moment in time, but you do. And I want you to work through this with me. I want you, as I'm talking, just to think of this grid, and we're going to plot people, people that you work with in your team. They might be your managers, they might be stakeholders, they might be um, other um, people that serve the business. But as we're talking through, I want you to plot them on this grid. And you're going to score them from one to 10 insofar as how much trust has that person got this in this relationship? Who's got your back? Good times and bad. Who can you totally, totally rely on? If you're scoring them five to 10, then pop them over here. If you're scoring them under, 
then they'll come on this side. The other way I want you to score them is in the agreement. To what point do those people know and share your goal, your vision? How supportive are they of the work that we're doing? Where are we going and who's pulling together with you? So then what we end up with is what I'm calling blockers, associates, challenges and supporters. Now, of course, where we really want people to be is up here. They've got our backs in good times and bad. And indeed, they're sharing the vision. They know where, where we're going. They know what my, my vision is and they'll act for me when I'm not around. Now, what I have down the bottom here is somebody who's got my back in good times and bad, to in total amounts of trust there, really, really trust this person, but I'm calling them a challenger because they don't really share my vision or where I'm going. And they'll throw in a few curveballs every now and again and quite disrupt the, the status quo. Now, hopefully what's happening in your head right now, you're thinking, well, okay, but surely we can move that challenger up there. All we've got to do is sit down with them, communicate what the vision is, get their participation, get their input, get their great ideas, praise, reward. Yeah, quite easy to get that challenger up there to be a supporter, isn't it? Bit of time, bit of communication, sharing the goals, talking them through, what's the top line objective? What are the strategies here? What are the tactics? And now on this side, we've got what I'm calling an associate, because even though they know where we're going and they're sharing the vision and they're sharing the agreement and they're doing everything on a daily basis to make us make sure we get there as a team, not really reliable or dependable, hasn't got my back in good times and bad, can't really, really rely on them. And again, hopefully you're thinking, well, what have I got to do to move this person over there? Spend more time, build that relationship, Get to know them, get to know what motivates them, get to know what, what excites them, you know, what lights the fire in their belly. Share with them, get to know them intimately and you can easy pop them over there as well. We're heading towards this top box of supporters. And then what we have at the, at the bottom here is obviously people that don't share the vision and indeed haven't got our back in good times and bad. We're calling them blockers. They're gonna take time We've all got these in the team, I'm sure, but you know, we're gonna have to work on them, give them lots of time, lots of mentoring, lots of shadowing, lots of coaching, spend some time with them to get them there. It's not happening. We need to performance manage those people out of the business, don't we? But I'm hoping that just while I was talking through that, you're starting to think about yourself back in the workplace, who's around you, who's in your support network, who's going to get you through this and how are we going to get back to where we need to be being. Moving on, we've got our um, tenacity, determination. This is all about, isn't it? Just like really, really getting the bit between your teeth and going for it. This is your persistence and determination, your willpower, all of those things, you know, the mindset to overcome everything despite of the difficulty that we're going through. I want you to find that and I want you to really, really nurture it because you're going to need this. We can't tend and befriend a global pandemic. So we've got to fight it and we're going to fight it with you know, tenacity and persistence. We're going to get on our bike of ability and we're going to drive it forward with the right attitude, with the right confidence, with this right fighting spirit. And I want you to make sure you, that you're there with me. We can't do it half-heartedly. We can't do it weekly. We've got to dig in deep and just you know really go deep with this and push as much as we possibly can so we've got to find that guys and it needs effort and it needs you to be fit and it needs you to be well and it needs you to be strong so we're going to keep working on that as well because sometimes as this little horse is telling us right now that horse could go anywhere it wants to go that's a blue plastic chair he could take that chair anywhere it's not holding him back Sometimes we think things are holding us back and they're not. This horse is used to being tied to something more rigid, more solid, something he can't get away from. And he's now programmed himself to believe that. 
So I want you to think about that. What is holding you back in your head? Should it really be holding you back? Can we not move it? If we're strong and determined, can we not get rid of that block? I think we can. We just need to view things differently, think about them differently, and find that sort of positive approach and attack. Taking control. I think I said to you at the beginning, this is my absolute favorite one. You know, you're in charge of your brain. You can take control of your brain. You really, really, really can. Our thoughts create our feelings. Our feelings impact upon our behavior, the way we present ourselves, the way we perform, the way we are. They're all linked, but it all starts with a thought. Who owns your brain? Well, it's in your head, so I guess you own it. So I don't have any influence over your brain or your thoughts whatsoever. So your thoughts create your feelings. And please don't think me mean for saying this to you, but whatever you're feeling right now, you created it. Something I've said might have influenced the thought, but you ultimately created the feeling. So thoughts always create feelings which will always impact upon behavior. And the way we behave in certain situations, of course, goes back to another thought pattern. I wonder if you'll play with me for a second. I want you to all do something for me. There's 82 of you on the call. I can't see you, so I'm going to have to trust you can do this. Um, Hilary, Chris and uh, Louis, please join in. I want you to all stand up for me. Wherever you are right now, just stand. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. This is weird. I wish I was in front of you. Everybody stood, make yourself comfortable. I want you to imagine that you have walked in to a hotel restaurant and there is the most amazing buffet out in front of you. Okay, stay standing. Don't worry about all the sweets there. You might not like sweets, but you imagine your buffet. There's dishes on this table from all around the world. Please be stood up and do this with me. Everything you love is on this table. There's lobster, there's ribs, there's, there's steak, there's vegetables cooked beautifully, there's roast potatoes, there's cheese fondue, there's fish, there's everything you absolutely love. Now I want you to pick up your plate. Now just imagine that you're picking up your plate. And in the other hand, I want you to pick up some tongs or a spoon, a big spoon. <laughs> okay. Right. We are stood. We've got our plate and we've got our tongs or a big spoon and we're ready. Now approach the buffet. Now start to put things on your plate. What do you fancy? Have a look. What do you love? Oh my gosh, go for it. Start to put things on your plate. Now freeze there for a second. Even if you're mid-reach of something, I hope you are. Freeze for a second. You're not putting things on your plate that you don't like, are you? You're not choosing things that you're allergic to. You're not choosing things that upset you. You're not choosing things that don't sit well with you. You're not choosing things that make you sick. Okay, I want you now to imagine there is no buffet. There's no food, I'm sorry. I know, Jules, you're a horrible person. There's no food anymore, but what is on the table in front of you are thoughts. So what thoughts are you going to choose, guys? Are you going to choose the ones that make you sick, make you feel ill, that are self-limiting, that are destructive? You're not choosing those thoughts. You're going to choose the thoughts that uplift you, that empower you, that make you feel amazing. You're going to 
choose the thoughts that give you real energy and positivity and happiness and the thoughts that make you laugh. You can take a seat. Thank you so much for playing that game with me. I really, really hope that that was a really powerful visualization for you. You have a choice. You can choose whatever thoughts you like. It's your brain. And I want you to choose thoughts that make you more resilient. The ones that make you strong. The ones that enable you to, to get through things, to fight to stand up for yourself, to enjoy life, to achieve, to win your goals and to really get to, 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 to achieve your visions and top line objectives. Things that give you a lift in your step. When you go out for a walk this afternoon after we finish this, and please do feel the lift in your step, feel how weightless you feel because you're choosing lovely thoughts. You're choosing light thoughts. And just always remember that the thought will create the feeling and the feeling impacts the behavior and the performance. So without going into to brain in a very technical sort of scientific way, I hope that I've simplified that for you so much so that you know, you know now that it's your choice. You're not stuck in the past in those old damning, you know, destructive thoughts, the ones that don't allow you to go anywhere or achieve anything. Life is good. We're up for enjoying. Let's choose really, really thought, great thoughts that serve us well. And we will change the lens. Our eyes now are lenses. They're camera lenses. Maybe you just need to sit there, twiddle those ones off, put them down. Grab some new ones. Grab some ones with sunny filters. Grab some ones with smiley emojis all over them and love hearts. Grab the ones that give you empathy and understanding and compassion and joy and passion and a love of life and a lightness. Go for it. Your choice. Very important. Looking after yourself is the last one. The sixth key of personal resilience. What do you do? What do you do with your me time? Do you have me time? Are you juggling? Are you homeschooling and being a wife and a cleaner and a cook and an exerciser and a mentor? And what are you doing? You need to make time for you. I'd like you please to go back to the chat box and just pop in the chat box what you love doing with your me time. When there's no one else to consider, what do you do? What makes you relax? What makes you feel great? So go on your keypads, have a pull up the chat box and have a really good go. Just tell me what you do. Time with the family, run, brilliant, brilliant. Walking in nature, doing nothing. Rock climbing, amazing. Cooking, walking on the beach, you lucky thing. Sailing, singing, reading a paper in front of the fire. Oh my God, you guys, you're amazing. Cycling, swimming, yoga, photography. Oh, well, you can change the, the lens, you, Oliver. <laughs> you're very good at this. A nice hot bath and a face mask. Oh my gosh, you made me want to do that this weekend. <laughs> Planning a holiday. Baking. Absolutely amazing. Gardening. Brilliant. Guys, whatever you do, keep doing it. It is so important. So, so, so important. You've got to be selfish with this me time. Never, 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 never give it up. Okay. Even when, you know, it, the times get really rough and you're just thinking like, oh God, I can't do this anymore. You know, I just want to veg. You know, I just want to stay in bed. You do that me time that you've dedicated to yourself. Put it in your diary. 
block out the, the hour or the half an hour, whatever it is you're giving yourself, hopefully longer, and refuse to move it. Write it down. Don't you find that if you write something down, you've got 10 times more chance of doing it? I do. And there's nothing that I love more than ticking something off my to-do list. It makes me feel really great. And when I get into bed at night, I almost give myself a little sort of um, score on how well I've done on my done list. <laughs> you were brilliant today. And sometimes I'm thinking, oh, God, look, it says hit workout. I don't want to do a hit workout. I'm not in the mood. But because it's on my list... I've got to do it right so I drag my bum upstairs and I get my trainers on and my workout gear and I go and do my little hit workout and then I come back and I cross it off my list and I really thoroughly enjoy doing it sometimes the thought of doing it though just doesn't make make me want to being outdoors and, and walking in the countryside is a lovely thing for me I live near the South Downs and it's just stunning on a day like today you've just got you can see the horizon and it just makes you feel so, so tiny. And anything that you were worried about is so now insignificant when you see the horizon. So whether you're socializing, exercising, whatever you're doing, this is your happy chemical. Endorphins are being released. Serotonin is flying through your brain. And they're the things that make you feel happy. So do more of them. Do whatever you want to do. Share some of those things that were in the uh, in the chat box. Maybe take up something new. Maybe there was something that someone was doing down there that, you know, you think, God, oh, I'd love to do that. I'm going to have that go at that. Do it. Commit today. Meditating, you know, that's always a good thing. Um, I was terrible at that to start with. I couldn't even achieve, you know, 30 seconds without another thought coming into my head. But, you know, I've got used to it now. And I literally imagine that I've got a tiny, tiny white feather on the end of my nose. And I have to sit really still and I have to keep focusing on this tiny white feather and it mustn't fall off. And I just sit there and I breathe really, really gently. <laughs> and I'm able to do it. So whatever works for you, just sit and take time for yourself. And I love the fact that the lady does that. There's a nice hot bath with a face mask. So that's a lovely thing. Listening to podcasts is lovely, you know, and just but whatever you choose to do, it doesn't matter what you do. Reading is great. Just immerse yourself in a book. And, uh, and then even if you do wake up in the middle of the night, go to it. You know, don't fight it. Don't just get up and go read your book, listen to your podcast, sing. <laughs> so you're not waking up anyone else in the house. So please, please be selfish with those things. Looking after your wellness. Otherwise, you're going to be looking after your sickness. And we really, really don't want that. Listen to your body. We're back to my gazelle here. You know, he's always on the outside of the herd and he's always looking after people. He needs sometimes to go and lie down. Talent goes to lie down. It rests. It plays. It passes the responsibility. It shares the load with the other gazelles in the herd. So I'm protector, but I'm on the outside of the herd and a lion's coming and I'm like, run, everybody run. And everyone's running and running and I'm panting and I'm protecting. And then we can go and lie and rest. And I'm like, look, chip in my hoof today. And I've pulled a muscle in my back leg. Day two, lioness, run, everybody run. I mean, we're good. We can run at 60 miles an hour, us gazelles. But I do need to go and lie down. I can't keep being the protector all the time. I've got to share the load. I've got to delegate. I've got to use my relationships, my network around me. And I listen to my body. And when that little strain in my in my back leg starts coming into a full-blown muscle and that little chip in my hoof has now split my hoof so we work hard we play hard repeat work hard play and rest and repeat this is called parabolic stress and we can all do it it's just nice you know we work hard and we rest and we play hard we work hard and we rest and we play hard and so you know this is what we need to try to achieve so know who's in your herd, listen to your body, know what it needs. If you need to go lie down, you need to play, you need to socialize, do it. Your body is telling you so. And, you know, if we look at our lifestyle, you know, exercise gives us all of these things. 
So exercise doesn't have to be running a marathon. It doesn't have to be even running. Exercise can just be getting outside in the fresh air. It's getting some oxygen, getting some sun on your face, a little bit of vitamin D, just walking in the rain. It doesn't matter. Just getting outside will help you to, to you know, break the thought pattern that you're in and it'll allow you to sort of really sort of associate with the, the, with the external energies as well. Look around you, look in the woods, look at the green fields, look at the sea, look at the sky, look at the trees, look at the chimney pots, look at the birds. Just really, really break the pattern of what you're currently doing. This is your new lens. This is the new you. I want you to feel on top of the world. And I think there's so many things that you know, we've covered here today. I want you to just try one on, just try it on for size and see how you go. I really, really think it's gonna be able to help you. So we've got our six keys that we've gone through. One of those is gonna resonate with you. One of those you're gonna sit in there now thinking like, yeah, you know what? I do need to go and connect. I haven't spoken to Jim for months. In fact, I don't think I've spoken to him through lockdown. I'm gonna go give him a call and you'll come off that call, hopefully laughing like you belly laughed or you're running an idea, a business idea through someone. Yeah, do you know what? I wasn't, you know, I was a little bit reticent about ringing them, but on the back of this, I'm going to go pick up the phone and ask because people love that. Think of your positive mental attitude, driving towards your sense of purpose all the time. Tenacity is going to get you on that bike and keep you riding your bike of ability so you're not going to wobble and indeed you're not going to fall off. Please, guys, you know, don't... Um, don't try and do all of these at once, like because I don't want you to fail. I don't want you to wake up at 3 a.m. and go like, oh, God, I'm trying everything and I'm failing. <laughs> that isn't the point. I want you to prioritize one, just one today. And, uh, you know, we'll see if we can make, make that one the difference. I'll just sort of uh, see what the date was today. The 26th of February, on Friday, the 26th of February, write it down. I will. I am going to and commit to yourself, write it down, and then you've got way, way, way more chance um, of, uh, of achieving it. So whichever one resonated with you, if you'd like to me to go over um, it again, I've got some you know, time for you, and, uh, and we can have another, uh, another look at any of those. But you've got this. You are way better at personal resilience than you think you are. It's all in our, in our little jelly mass, remember, that's, that's up there, something that we control, and something that we can now, you know, make a change towards. So I'm going to pass it over to Hillary to, to have a look at any comments or any questions that have appeared in the chat box. Lovely, can they put me on LinkedIn? By all means, please. I'd love that. Thank you, Jules, very much. That was that was really interesting, and as always, done with such positive energy that just comes comes <laughs> from you. you. Um, I, I'm not sure if there are any questions. If you have got any questions, please um, please put them in the in the Q and A box. We've had some great stuff coming through the chat box. Thank you. Um, I was what I'm reminded of with you talking is that it's not that people are resilient or we're not resilient. It's that it's something that we can all practice to get better at, isn't it? It's it's not that pe that someone's a resilient person and someone else isn't. We're all capable of being resilient. It's just practicing some habits and techniques to do so it is and, and a repeated action you know will become a habit so sometimes we just need to create new habits for ourselves don't we um you know ones that we can keep repeating yeah i think so and i think also that there's also something about the brain that it doesn't know the difference between reality and make-believe so even yeah. if you're not feeling particularly resilient you can almost well you can actually fake it till you make it so Absolutely. don't wait until we feel strong to start doing strong things. Just you know, start somewhere and, and fake it. it You've got some lovely things coming through. Positivity, taking positivity for, for a walk today. Lovely. It's great <laughs> when the sun comes out because you talked about vitamin D. And, and when yeah. we face into the sunshine, we're actually filling our brains with serotonin, aren't we? Which then creates vitamin mm -hmm. D as well your brain can't create serotonin which is a happy hormone on its own it has to have sunshine to help it indeed so, it really does um thank you so much dean i saw that you put there that you're reading um feel the fear and do it anyway a phenomenal book you know really really and, and i see that you've just started it you know do keep reading that's a great book to read um and it does it just shows you that it is just fear 
and fear is just a thought you know and uh, you need to believe you can and you will um, and insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again expecting different results isn't it so we mustn't uh, allow that to happen there's another great book called um the chimp paradox um mind management um, which is Dr. Peter Stevens, I think, is the author of that. And that's a brilliant book because it talks about the chimp who's being your inner critic all the time, okay. applying emotion to things. And sometimes we just need to tell the chimp, it's okay, I've got this, shush. <laughs> and we need to control him, you know, thank you very much, but no, not today. That doesn't serve me or my friends well. <laughs> so, very good. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes we, we live with beliefs that we didn't actually create, were created for us. Yes. So the yes. beliefs about what we can and can't do were, were implanted in us you know, very early on. So sometimes it's worth taking those out and, and questioning them, holding them up to light and saying, do I really need this? Mm. Um, exactly that. Mm. Yeah. And if it's a good belief that you keep, keep that sustains you, then by all means keep it. But if it's one that is a, a mean little voice in your head then get rid of it brilliant yeah Good. flip Very it good. love that book as well fiona amazing yeah thank you joanne it is peter stevens mm -hmm. lovely brilliant thank so, you any questions anybody want to ask jules a question while she's still here you've got a few minutes left um, the links are going in for the the podcast and the um, and the video and the video. I don't know if you've seen it. We did the, we took apart a part of the scarf model, so we we did some yes. brain science with the video as well. So I, I really like that mo model. I love the work of David Rock. I think um, he's really good. And then um, the podcast was really useful with Claudia with some t hints and tips as well for resilience. Very 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 much along the lines of the the advice and the tips that you've given us yes indeed yeah i was hoping to to add on and uh, and support those things and i listened to them both so yeah thank you lovely very good good we're getting some nice thank you some nice comments and uh, that's great i think you've, you've, you've helped quite a few people out there today and Thanks. it's lovely that it's a nice sunny day Did. so i'm going to go and enjoy that and get some serotonin and vitamin d <laughs> in my system and, uh, yeah, Thank you very much for joining us, Jules. That's really kind. Thank You're you very most much. welcome. And if there's anything I can do for you in the future, you know, please you know, be in touch. I'd love to support oh. you again. <laughs> oh, we will. Thank you. <laughs> love so you guys, thank you. So, guys, we're 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 finished now for for my dust for February. Um, keep an eye on my dust for March when we're tackling the topic of motivation. So we're moving on from resilience into motivation. What does motivation look like? Um, how do I help myself and others to become more motivated or create an environment where people are likely to feel more motivated? And by that time, we'll be a whole month nearer to opening, whether outdoors or hopefully indoors in May. Mm -hmm. um, and we're moving towards it. We're moving out of this. So yeah. thanks for joining us. Thanks again to Jules. Thanks to Chris and Custard for the technical help. Yeah. And uh, have good months in between. Any problems or questions, you know where we are, contact us on LinkedIn and we'll hope to see you soon. Okay, bye now. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed.